Hi everyone, it's Darlene. Welcome back for another card. Today I'm using the Stampin' Up! set from the Occasions Catalog called Painted Petals. It's got a really a uh, lot of really nice flowers in it and this is a photopolymer clear set. I'm also going to be using my Prismacolor colored pencils which I haven't used in a while and this new Shape and Tape um, in black by We Are Memory Keepers and it's basically kind of washi tape but it comes in sheets and you can cut it in any shape that you like. Alright, so I'm going to start off by taking some uh, Spellbinder circles. I'm taking the fourth one in from the outside. I'm going to center it on a piece of four and a quarter by five and a half inch cardstock. Now this is Stampin' Up! cardstock. Um, and I'm just drawing this circle so that I know where I need to stop my flowers. So um, the set comes with this kind of two flower stamp, but I'm going to use one flower at a time. So I'm going to use a small one and some real red ink and I'm going to randomly uh, stamp this flower all the way around the circle. Um, and I'm going to be using the other flower uh, with some Melon Mambo ink. So I've got some pink and some red. And I'm going to kind of evenly spread them out across the cardstock here. And I will eventually trim this down um, by just an eighth of an inch, but I'm starting off with a full size so I can cut it um, depending on which side comes out the best. So here's my other flower, and they're separated just enough for me to be able to apply the ink to the stamp without affecting the other one. Um, so that's really convenient because I didn't want to stamp them together. So I'm going to continue doing this with the Melon Mambo. And this flower is a little bit bigger and it's got a little bit more of um, shading in it, if you will. So the way this shape, uh, or the way this stamp is shaped, um, and printed. It's kind of like it's got some dark areas and some light areas in it. So when you stamp it with just one ink color, it looks like it's got multiple colors in it. All right, this is another flower in the set. It's just a very small flower. I'm going to do the same thing. I'm going to stamp it in Soft Sky, another uh, Stampin' Up! ink. And I'm going to randomly do this. Now I'm doing all my flowers first, and then I'll go back and add my greenery. This, I'm also using this same flower in Wisteria Wonder, which is a purplish kind of lilac ink. And I'm just randomly, and I'm kind of rotating it a little bit so it's not always in the same direction. Um, but I'm mostly facing the petals inward. Now finally I'm doing this kind of bud flower in So Saffron, to, and I'm filling in the holes that I missed. So this will be my last color. Um, and notice that uh, the top of the flower is always facing the middle. All right, next I'm going to add my greenery. Now this set comes with many different um, stem pieces. So I'm going to start off with the one that's kind of the largest. I'm using Wild Wasabi ink. And I'm going to look for areas that have enough white for me to stamp these leaves without getting uh, too much of it on the flowers. So it's okay if to touch the flowers a little bit or go a little bit over them, but I don't want to um, cover any major portion of the flowers. So I'm going to use a little post-it here um, to cover up some of the flowers. And notice I'm going to pick this up and show you that leaf did not stamp, but it's okay because I'm going to be going back in here with some uh, colored pencils and I will fix that so it's no big deal. So none of this really has to be exact. I'm kind of putting a lot of thought into it, but I, I kind of go faster as I go here because there is a lot to cover. So I'm just kind of twisting it around here and there. I want the stems to look like they're coming out from behind a flower. So I'm going to make sure I attach them, or at least do my best to attach them to a flower. So I'm going to speed this up. And definitely use Stampin' Up! cardstock with the Stampin' Up! inks because it absorbs much, much better. All right, this is another uh, stamp. This has three leaves also, but it doesn't have that long stem so I can look for a little bit smaller area um, to cover. And I also want it to look like my uh, leaves are coming out and my flowers are coming out off the edge of the paper. So I make sure I cover everything outside that, that middle circle. All right now this, this other stem has kind of a, it's got one leaf and it's got a stem and then it's got this other sort of one little short stem off to the side, um, which a couple of times I've covered up or used a baby wipe to, to um, take the ink off of because it just didn't go in there. It's kind of sticking out there by itself. 
but this stem is kind of curved and notice that I'm making all my stems actually pull out toward the edge of the paper outside the circle. So I want to look like all the flowers are kind of falling in toward the circle. And I keep rotating my um, cardstock around so I can uh, make sure I go all the way around the circle and hit all the spots that are available for the stamp that I'm using. So this is just a plain leaf and I'm just going to go around with this plain leaf stamp. And I noticed I needed another purple flower to make it look even so I went ahead and added that. And now I'm going back with my leaf stamp again. I'm just going to fill in a few more holes. So notice I started with the largest um, greenery stamp and then moved down until I got to the smallest which is this one leaf. Now I have this stem, it's like three stems in a row, but I'm only going to be inking up one of the stems. And this, um, I like the way this looks because it's actually pulling the flowers and, and it looks like the stems are coming out from the edge of the paper. So um, I'm going to stamp all the way around and make sure that these um, stems go kind of, I don't know how to describe it, really just out from the center of the card to the edge. So they all look like they're kind of falling forward. And here I'm using my um, post-it quite a bit because this stem is pretty long and I don't want it to cover too much. And it's really easy, these stems, these three stems on the stamp are very far apart, so it's really easy to just ink up one. All right, this video was kind of hard to do because I kept going back and forth, and now I'm going back with the one um, a green leaf stamp to fill in some of the holes. So I don't want it to get too crowded, but then again I do want it to, to be full. So I decided to add one more yellow flower to complete my circle because it did feel a little bit off. Or actually two. <laughs> Sorry about that. Uh, and then I went back in with my stems and stamped them in the wild wasabi. All right, so I keep going around in my circle to make sure that I haven't missed any of the flowers. And I think I pretty much have it done at this point. You can see what it looks like. All right, the next thing I'm gonna do is erase that uh, pencil line I made of the circle, because I don't need that anymore. And now I'm gonna start with my Prismacolor pencils. The first one is dark green. Now I'm pointing out here, I've got a very, very dull tip. You don't want a sharp um, point on your pencil because I'm not really making um, heavy lines. I'm coloring in a very sort of shading fashion. So um, I'm taking what's what I see on the stamp. So the stamp itself has some light and dark areas and I'm mostly taking my pencil and going over the, um, the solid areas of the stamp and it's going to give me just a little bit of a different color. Now I pulled these pencils from the 25 pack of the Prismacolor pencils and I just pulled the color that I thought would match the best. Um, and see there was a white area in the stamp and I really didn't color that with my colored pencil. And so I'm just going to go all the way around here and really highlight all of these, these, um, these leaves. And you really don't have to be an expert. I mean, I just kind of outlined it a little bit and colored some in the middle and you want each of them to be different. It's kind of a messy look. It's not an exact look. So you really don't have to be professional about your shading and make sure the light's coming from the right side or the left side on every single one. I'm just actually being very random about this. Now with the pencil, I'm also filling in any stem marks that kind of didn't get um, you know, stamped all the way to just complete it. All right, now I'm going back in with the blue and I'm showing you the stamp here. You can see the stamp actually has some dark areas and some light areas. I'm gonna take my pencil. I'll have the names of all the pencils actually in my blog post here. And I'm gonna go over the dark areas with my pencil and with this soft sky color, it was kind of hard for me to see um, what areas were stamped light and which ones were dark, but it was fine because I kind of made all of them a little bit random because you don't want them to all look the same. And again, I'm, I'm, I'm doing some shading very lightly. I'm not pressing hard with my pencil and that's why I want a very dull tip because I don't really want any pencil lines. I just want it to be shaded. All right, so I'm finished with my blue. Now I'm gonna take a purple, mark, or a purple pencil and I'm going to do the same thing. 
And with the uh, Wisteria Wonder, I was able to really see on the stamp which parts were light and which ones were dark. So it was much easier to color with the pencil. But then I did kind of do a little bit of random because I didn't want them all to be the same. And once again, just going all the way around. Now I found that this um, kind of bigger rose was a little bit more difficult. Um, not as hard as the red one. This one's the Melon Mambo one and I'm using a purple, a purplish colored pencil. And I'm mostly going in, there were definitely some dark areas that I went ahead and colored, but um, I also added some shading to the very edge of um, the stamp in the different areas. So um, it's kind of hard to see because I'm trying to color with the top of the pencil because that's the dullest portion of it. Um, so I'm going to kind of create a little bit of a rose looking here um, and adding just a little bit more color to the center and to the edges of where the white touches the, the, uh, the flower. And again, it doesn't have to be exact and it's, it's not going to be perfect. It's really not supposed to look realistic. Alright, so here you can see I'm coloring the dark areas. And then I went around that piece right there, even though there wasn't really a dark area because I, I wanted to get a little bit more color, the purplish color on the edges. And really the whole point of this whole thing is to just get a little bit more dimension with the flowers by adding a, a different color. Okay, so I'm going to continue with all of my uh, Melon Mambo roses. I'm going to speed that up a little bit. And uh, the lighter portions of these stamps do look a little um, kind of like a gridish, kind of gridish, um, where it's got lines up and down. And um, so I did a little bit of very light coloring to, to go over that, um, just to hide it a little bit because I, I didn't like it that much. So, But you can hide it easily by just doing a very, very light um, layer of the colored pencil. Now this red one was definitely the hardest because it didn't have a lot of variations in the stamp. So the first thing I did was I colored around that white circle in the middle and then I did create one petal. And you'll see me create it right here um, where I drew a line right in the middle of that giant red area. It's kind of hard with my finger in the way but this, I think on the second one it's a lot easier to see. And then I just went around all the edges and made them a little bit darker. See, I'm going over the edge right there just to get a different um, shade. All right, I'm going to move to another one here. Um, so I'm going around that white circle with the red pencil. And the red is almost the same color. And see here I am drawing a line right in the middle to create that petal. So I'm joining that one crease with the white area on the left-hand side with a line and then I'll use my pencil to kind of shade that toward the center of the petal that I just created. So I mean it's really not that scientific or artistic it's just going to the edges and then moving your pencil like coloring it toward the center. And as you can see it's really kind of hard to see the variation because I've got this red pencil that's very close to the red that I stamped. But when you see it in person you actually um, can tell more of a difference. So I'm going to go ahead and finish this up and speed it up. It's kind of a little hard again to um, record this video because it did take some time to me for me to go and color all these petals. But um, I'd say the whole entire card from beginning to end took about an hour, which I didn't think was too bad with how much coloring I did. All right, for this final one, the the yellow, I took kind of a yellowish orange colored pencil. And I'm just going to do the left hand side. I'm going to do a little bit of a dark edge there and then I'm going to shade it toward the center. And maybe cover the bottom just a little bit with that orange but not too far up the right side. And notice there would be a different light coming from each of these, right? So some of them are going to have light on the left, some of them are going to have light on the right, but I'm just doing them all the same because it really doesn't matter. I mean, it would matter if you're doing like a professional thing, but <laughs> um, anyway, I just uh, I just wanted to look 
a little bit more realistic. All right, so you can see that one side of mine is a little bit larger than the other, like there's flowers coming out in a wider area. So I went ahead and trimmed it on those sides. So I trimmed off an eighth of an inch on each side. Now here's, here's the nerve wracking part where I have to make sure I stamp this right or I've just ruined the whole thing. <laughs> And I put my stamp in my jig there just in case I didn't get a good image. So that way I'd have it positioned to stamp again, but I didn't need to. Now here's my shape and cut um, by We Are Memory Keepers. And I decided to go with a thin stripe. I'm going to go ahead and cut off an eighth of an inch, two of them. And it's pretty easy to peel off. Now the first time I did this, I peeled the whole entire strip off, like the backing off the whole thing. And then it curled all the way up and it was kind of a big mess. So I decided that I was going to do it a little bit at a time. So I pulled off the backing at the top and then I'm going to put it on my card. And as I move it across the edge, I will peel the backing off. And this makes it a lot easier to apply. Now with these, um, these sheets, the, the white area is actually clear. So you can see the flowers underneath in between the black, sh the black lines on this uh, strip that I just cut. I'm just gonna trim off the ends with a uh, scissor. And then I'm gonna do the same thing on the top. I didn't want to add too much to this card because I think the flowers are the focal point. I went ahead and adhered this panel to a, a four and a quarter by five and a half inch folded piece of Hero Arts black cardstock, which is white in the, on the other side. And notice when I crease this cardstock, I notice sometimes the black will peel up a little bit. So I just take a scissor and I just trim that off. And you could actually color it black where it was trimmed off um, if you really want to be perfect about it, but I just left it. Anyway, it's um, kind of a simple card when you look at it, but I know there's a lot of coloring, but I think it just turned out really nice. I was really happy with this set. So anyway, I hope you enjoyed it and I will see you next time. Thanks for watching.